Got him, yeah. Got him, oh, that's a big one. Oh, yes. Got him, oh my God. Oh, that's a big one. What is up, MFers, and welcome to uh, 1,100 miles away from home, as you can see. Got the Palomino camper and the, the old Ram right back there behind us. And the reason we are 1,100 miles from home is, well, it's Max's fall break. We want to go somewhere we've never been before. And somehow, even though we grew up in Nebraska, we have never been in the Black Hills of South Dakota. If you're not familiar with this area, very special, unique region. Um, it's just like a big oval shape of really badass mountains, hills, um, and, and stuff that looks like beautiful clean water creeks as you see right back behind me. And so of course I got to do a little bit of fishing. But basically we picked Max up from school at the start of his fall break and we uh, we rolled all the way up here nine hours away and we are 1100 miles from Houston, Texas. But we always like to explore new places. That's what we're doing up here. Unbelievable trout fishing right here, right in the city. And it's wild fish, rainbow and one of my favorite all time species of fish to catch, the brown trout. And they live right down there. I just walked up to the creek. And I've been to the spot right here. Like I said, camper is right over there. Walked up there. There's like a handful of trout right in this little riffle, this little slow spot right here. I can't imagine how many fish are going to be in this entire section. That's what we're going to explore the next couple of days. This is my tackle that I brought for the trip. So I went and picked up some of these really small jerk baits, very refined. This is like a, a flat, what's this called? The flat side great hunting 50 fs got some other crazy looking stuff like this guy right here of course i had to bring the inline spinners because those work everywhere my, my tackle is already completely unorganized the old faithful hair jigs these are my white river zig jigs I had to pick up some, one of these guys too the smallest glide bait i have ever seen that's the gancraft 70 size sinking version i think it's made for trout i don't know what it's made for but i'm gonna use it and see what they catch and then of course if we do go and get some bait i might need to get some bait from the tackle stuff we have uh, some shot weights and some little tiny baby hooks one bobber I don't know, this is what was tied on Ozzy's pole too. And then of course, got this Melican travel rod. This is the four piece travel edition, comes with its own case, breaks down to four pieces that are very, very small. If you guys travel a lot, like I do, or you have a small car, or you just don't have a lot of storage space or something like that, this travel rod is absolutely amazing. To tell you guys a story just really quick about this travel rod, I haven't told you this before, I have like a $600 four piece travel rod. I was like, dude, I, I gotta have this in the Melican series, the MF -er series from Six Sense. And once I owned one and I traveled with it, I fished with it, I was like, this is so applicable to so many people around the country and the world that bank fish, that don't have a lot of storage options or that just travel and they can't bring a full size rod tube on their plane. They need to have this four piece rod. There's a lot of two piece rods out there, of course, but this isn't gonna fit on your carry on luggage or your checked luggage. So this four piece size that come in, comes in the badass little little carrying sack that we got, to our surprise, we sent it to the factory and we made a couple adjustments. We came back with this right here. And in my opinion, this $119 model and with the MF10 discount comes up to a little bit over hundred dollars. It's absolutely perfect for any of you guys that are traveling around or you're just a bank fisherman that, that wants a smaller, more compact rod. We have it in a casting model and of course the 611 medium moderate, which is what I'm going to be throwing a bunch of these little tiny trout baits on that are catching sticks and leaves already. Little tiny baits. This thing can throw little tiny baits. If, if you throw shaky heads, wacky rigs, the new hover juggle rig that I kind of invented a little bit, sort of. This guy is absolutely stellar. I paired it up um, with this Shimano Stratic, eight pound braided line with a six pound fluorocarbon leader. This creek is crystal clear, and that's what we're gonna be exploring the next couple days. So I cannot wait. I'm gonna show you some pictures and some videos, pro probably from our journey that we've been on the last few days. And I'm told this creek behind our campground right here with our camper right there is absolutely loaded with not only numbers of fish, but some really big fish as well. It's gonna be a freaking blast. Let's get it. We walked by here earlier and there was like five or six trout in this little pool right here. They spooked super easy. Not gonna be an easy cast. Sneak up on them a little bit. Hide behind this tree.
Oh, that was a fish. <laughs> Already had a bite. Right by the campsite. Look at these little hooks on this thing. I have no idea if those are actually going to work. They're like circle hooks almost. I guess you just reel into them. Didn't work on that one. I'm about to switch up to a little hair jig already. Oh my god, that was another one. I'm missing fish like crazy because this stupid ass little hook. We're gonna switch up to a little hair jig, see if that helps. badass little brown trout finally hooked to one on these tiny little hooks he got away that's all right though we're getting a lot of follows the spot looks absolutely perfect undercut bank deep tons of follows we're gonna stick one all the way to the bank soon that'd be nice Yes, that was so awesome. That fish freaking smoked that hair jig. I just tied on a black one. Look how beautiful this fish is. Beautiful wild brown hair jig. Hell yeah, probably a well, 13 inch fish. So sick. We are on the board and that guy freaking got that hook. Look at that, right in the snout. We're gonna get them right put back. A White River hair jig. Yes. And one of his buddies freaking came over and tried to gulp it. Crazy. I've tried like five different hard baits. And I tried the uh, green pumpkin with a gold head. Hair jig. Just put on this black hair jig. And they freaking darted over and grabbed it. And there's one on it again. Two on it again. Well, I guess I figured out what bait I'm about to be using for a little while. Got it! Oh my god, yes, right in front of me! It's a big brown! Oh my god! Look at this thing! I just dropped it right from the trail! Holy shit, that's so badass. Come land him on this rock. Hopefully. Probably drop my phone in the water. Look how beautiful this fish is, guys. <laughs> he must have been sitting right here. I dropped it from the damn trail at the campground. So we found the right spot to camp. Hell yeah. Look at that brownie. You bet beautiful once again black hair jig freaking crushing it really nice size fish that's probably a 16 inch fish like i said not keeping any on this little mission but what a freaking awesome catch in front of the damn campground we're staying in and once again on the black hair jig dropping it straight down in front of me hell yeah all right, get him back. Thanks for playing, bud. I was trying to drop it right down by this rock and get it. I thought maybe there'd be one underneath of it. And that guy came from right over there, just a slow water, little deep area. <sighs> I ain't arguing with it. On to the next pool. Even though this isn't really a pool, just kind of a little bit slower water area. It's kind of the deal so far. And. So is the black jig. I've been breaking them off like crazy. I believe I got a little heavier one on. This might be a, for a 1 16th. Not quite an 8th, I don't think. What is that? 3 64th would be the next size up between a 16th and an 8th. Sounds right. Got him. Got him. I'm right by the bridge. 
right by the bridge. Little brown. I can't believe how many fish are right here. I can see them darting out everywhere. That's the smallest dude we've caught. Still a super cool fish though. Get him right back in. A little urban fishing right in the middle of the city. Incredible. Yes. Yes. Another one. Yahtzee. Yahtzee. Oh wow, he hooked me. Great. That felt awesome. Little brown guy. He wet my hand like a proper tree fisherman. And would you look at that? Beautiful, probably, I don't know, 14, 15 ish brown trout. Hell yeah. There's like a little hydro plant, something up here I could see on the uh, map. So I'm hoping to maybe find a bigger pool behind it with a bunch of fish. But I was kind of fishing my way up to it. <laughs> this is, it's so weird. I swear, every time you fish for bass, you have to have your bait for the most part. There's not a 100% rule. Like 90% of the time, these fish get so dialed into your bait, flushing down the current perfectly. Trout just don't play by the rules at all. It seems like it's almost better to have your bait coming sideways in the current or quartering downstream, which I know that's not rocket science for those of you guys that trout fish a lot, but it's just interesting how you can go through an area and make the perfect presentation upstream, stay nice and stealthy. And then you get through the air and you're like, I'll oh, screw it. I'll fire a cast back through the same fish that wouldn't touch anything back downstream after they've seen you and they will freaking chase and eat it. It's wild. Fishing stuff. Danger. Keep out. Caution. Whatever. This looks money. Oh yeah. Oh no, it came off. That was a giant. No. How did that come off? Made a perfect cast right up there in the damn boiler. I laid into that one and it was just meat. Just meat sloshing around up there. Oh my God, I just lost another one. And it was big. You gotta be kidding me. I don't think there's any way I was gonna be able to make that cast again. Bam, dropped it right in there. Dropped it right in his grill and he didn't stick. Got him. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, yes. Come here. Come here, baby. Oh, my God. Yes. Look at this fish, guys. Look at this one. Beautiful freaking brown. Oh, my goodness. He just did the old barrel roll. Switched to the old map. Look at that fish. Oh my goodness, that's like a 22 inch brown. Wow, freaking crush. A little spinner too. Long and skinny for sure, but definitely a badass trout. Probably in the 21 inch range. Turn them back loose. Wowza. Right behind the plant too. <laughs> that was incredible. I really want to fire one over the top, but I'm not going to. I wish I had something I could skip up under that really well because I guarantee there's some freaking donkey stores up there. All the natural stuff I had to throw, they want this. The old golden black Panther Mark. <laughs> Never fails. It looks like we're in the middle of nowhere, but Campground's actually right back there. A lot of the places I go are definitely out there off the grid. This is not one of them, but it's insane that you have this kind of habitat and fish in these beautiful areas that are kind of just running through the cities. Definitely makes me feel a little jealous. I'm gonna take a quick break with uh, one of these guys. We got, what is this? Crow Peak 11th Hour IPA. Oh, a little foamy, huh? It tastes like, uh, like foam. 
I had to pick some local brews up from the gas station when I saw them like I always do, but so far the fishing's been solid. They're definitely a little spooky and they don't want to eat everything I'm throwing at them, but like I said, I'm 200 yards from our camper and it looks like this, crystal clear water. Haven't seen any rainbows, even though I've heard there's rainbows and browns here. It's been all brown trout. And uh, a little bit later, I don't know if it's gonna be tonight or tomorrow, we're actually gonna go up into the canyon and it's supposed to be just unbelievably beautiful up there with the same exact creek running through it. So I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this guy right here. We'll get back to fishing. Oh, that's a big one. Oh no. Oh my God. How did it not get hooked up? How is that fish living right here in the damn campground? Jeez. I can looking at the fish right now. No way it's gonna bite again, of course. Oh, cannot believe that fish was right here. That's a giant, I mean, that's like a 22, 23 inch brown. Dang, crafty little fish. Just don't get hooked very often. right in his mouth so hard to see this for you guys maybe a water land will help a little bit back in that far side there went one right there i'll try to zoom in on it but there's like five trout against that back corner right in that sand patch it's a super tough cast to get it to him because it's really snaggy right there oh my god it was in one's mouth but they're just super super sketchy I'm sure they get fish from at the bridge. Caught a few chase it way out of there. Just not getting hooked up. Before I leave, I need to try a different presentation. Like a jerk bait. Let's try a jerk bait up in there. Oh my god. First cast with a jointed claw. The baby claw. A freaking rainbow! The only rainbow we've seen is on the first cast with this miniature glide bait. And look how pretty this wild rainbow is. That is so badass. Well, my day's winding down. It seems like I put the damn joint of claw on way too late. There's a giant brown I can see that's super spooky swimming around. He's looked at my jerk bait twice. So I put on this uh, little jointed claw miniature glide bait. Hoping that he would eat it. Maybe he still will. Dang, that is incredible. The smallest glide bait that I've ever seen, that I know of. I was twitching along and that guy crushed it. This might not look like much. This creek is loaded with giant fish. Got him. Oh, we bit it. Oh, he's on. Oh my God, it's the giant one. 